On today's episode of the Darod Messinger Show, Dylan and I rank our top three headlines for Texas entering the 2023 season. Now, Dylan, of course, headlines, you know, are nice. You get to get ready for the season. You know, Dylan, we've been getting ready for the season for the past six months. That's why we haven't been making yeah. videos, guys. Yeah. I can't confirm or deny, but maybe we've been making a cross-country, you know, road trip together, seeing the mountains of Washington after a, uh, you know, difficult loss for Texas. But, you know, Dylan, yeah. that just, you know, set us up on this six-month hiatus. Uh, yeah, a lot of marshmallows, you know. Yeah, I mean, we watched a lot of Aaron Rodgers videos during this time. And it really spoke to us. We were like, we're going to go on some spiritual enlightening trips, Devin. And we're coming back with even more vigor, ready for the season. Yeah. And, uh, you know, as I was saying, what a better way to kick it off with the little headlines to get people, you know, ready and anticipated for the season. And, uh, you know, Don and I don't always agree, but we did come up with the, you know, three headline list here. So, you know, anything is possible, guys. Don't, don't believe in you know, the inability of world peace. If we can come together, you know, for five minutes yeah. to talk to you guys, yeah. it's possible. But uh, Ukraine and Russia, figure it out. And on that note of world peace, headline number three, Dylan, I mean, you know, this could be even higher up depending on, you know, how, uh, you know, clickbait you want to get. But uh, can the Texas defense continue its, you know, upward trajectory? That's the headline here. Overall, of course, you know, year number three of defensive coordinators has not been good, Dylan. I believe since it was like the Mac Brown uh, tenure, I don't think a defensive coordinator has lasted more than three seasons. So, you know, uh, Coach K on the sidelines, please buckle up. But, of course, Dylan, on the positive side of things, last season looked pretty good. I, you know, not perfect, of course, <laughs> but pretty darn good. The Longhorns were a little bit more of a balanced attack on both defense and offense. Jalen Ford leading the way. But overall, yes, can Texas improve? Of course, that's what everyone wants to see. But can they at least maintain what they've got so far and not take a slip? Yeah, I mean, it was one like it was very weird when we were watching the first few games, this first few weeks, especially that Alabama where it was like, Wow, that d the defense looks a lot better this year in a certain like, especially in the up front, right? Didn't feel like everyone could just run all over Texas. While in years past, it just felt like they couldn't stop a, you know, a bleeding wound or anything of that sort. So it was definitely refreshing to be like, wow, the guys up front, particularly like Alfred Collins, Demetrius Sweat was starting to get up on the scene, um, and like just kind of providing that support against the run that we haven't seen in in, in years past, like I was talking about. But there's still other aspects that they need to improve, right? Uh, especially, you're not going to be able to have that Big 12 stereotype that you used to have, especially now going into the SEC. Defense is going to be even more important. Now, with Texas, they at least have the talent. But to go off last year's statistics, they were 33rd in college football for rush yards allowed, Devin, with 125.7. And then in the secondary, which is the problem area that I'm sure you'll touch on at some point, they were 91st in college football for pass yards allowed with 242.7, right? So the tackling up front, uh, the ability to get pressure on quarterbacks in the Big 12 with the front seven that Texas had, most namely with Jalen Ford and Overshown from the line pa linebacker position, really just creating hell in the backfield. Um, that was a strong suit for them. However, it felt like the secondary was getting torched constantly. Yeah, I think that's fair. And we saw a good season from guys like Jade Barron, but overall, like I think Ryan Watts had an injury that kept him off the field for a little bit. Not too insane though. He did come back. But overall, can we see consistency there? Can Barron continue to be what he was, but then can everyone else step up? And you know, the Longhorns answered some of your questions, Dylan, with transfer additions. I made a nice little mini list. You know, we had defensive back Gavin Holmes from Wake Forest. And then Jalen Catalan out of Arkansas. Catalan was one of the best players in the country a couple years ago. He's been a little banged up lately. Yep. But that, that's just showing that, of course, they see what you're saying, Dylan. You know, the coaching staff, you know, has called Dylan and said, like, what can we do? Dylan's like, defensive back. So hopefully there's a little uptick in production there or, you know, lack of production in terms of uh, offensive side of that. But we'll see yet again. And then you mentioned Overshone. With him not being on the roster anymore, thanks to the NFL calling his name, 
you know, it's going to be interesting to see who steps up at linebacker. Will that be like an Anthony Hill that takes his place? Yeah. Overall, there's going to be probably a good position battle there before the uh, season starts. But just things to note. Now, Dylan, we're going to move on to headline number two. And in the heart of Texas fans, Dylan even mentioned this before the video to me. This might be number one. Uh, you know, you know, uh, SpongeBob Tiny Fiddle here, Dylan. Can Texas replace B. John Robinson? I think the, uh, the realistic answer is no. You shouldn't expect anyone to replace him. But as a committee, or if Jonathan Brooks just ends up being the main guy, you know, through and through, can they at least get to, you know, a serviceable number? to allow the passing game to, you know, really complement that run. Yeah, I mean, so most namely you're going to want to look at, I mean, the talent-wise, you're not going to be able to replace Bichon, right? Like, that's the, he's top 10 pick, went to Atlanta at number eight. Being drafted as a running back in the top 10 in the NFL nowadays, that's not normal, especially with just how long careers last. So if you're a running back like that, then you're expected to almost be a hopefully a near Hall of Famer. So there's really no way you're going to be replaced that unless you're incredibly lucky or you produce talent like Alabama does, that you'll be able to replace that, right? So most notably, you're going to want to look at the experience of the offensive line. So Calvin Banks at left tackle, who started all 13 games as a freshman, right? He's going to be there again, as well as Cole Hudson at guard. Those are two young guys that have gained experience from last year. They will be most notably looking at to create those holes for the running backs, in the, obviously in the backfield. Most namely, Devin, first thought that comes to mind, the uh, out school legend, Jonathan Brooks, right? I remember we were covering him back in the day, like two years ago or so when they were on that run. Uh, out was in that run uh, in the in the postseason where we were just, I think, picking against them every time. They just kept beating, beating them, especially coming in as an underdog, right? So you've got talent in the backfield with Brooks. Obviously not the same level as Bijan, but with that offensive line, I think it is possible to get near that production Yardage wise, you might not be able to have that like the intangibles, the the breaking tackles, making guys miss, and the catching ability that Bijan had. That's going to be very tough to replace out of the backfield. But I think it, it it is there with the talent that Texas has accumulated in an offensive line. Yeah, I think those are uh, good points. Of course, Jonathan Brooks. Yeah, we apologize if we picked against you in high school, Dylan. I don't know if I did. You know, I, I've been a big Jonathan. All right, Brooks it might have just been guy. me. I'm probably projecting onto you a little bit. But... You know, I, I think it's you there. I I'm a I'm a fan of Brooks, but uh, yeah, I got to cover him a couple times in high school. Will make anyone miss, especially at that three A or two A level. I think it was three A, but yeah. Oh, but at Texas, Dylan, when he's gotten chances, you know, not a lot of snaps. Of course, he's had a couple guys above him on the uh, depth chart. But when he's gotten chances, he's been scoring touchdowns. And, you know, another thing to note here is, of course, Bijan is our headline name here. But we're also missing Roshan, who, of course, was number two on that depth chart, but was also good enough to be drafted. It's kind of hard, you know, for most teams to have two running backs drafted in the same draft. And especially for a Texas team that has just struggled to have anybody drafted in the draft. So, I mean, hey, look at that. That's great. From, you know, the draft perspective. But now, as we're saying, not depleted of a roster. Don't, you know, let anyone think that this roster is depleted in terms of running backs. But now in terms of experience, pretty much depleted, Dylan. You got Jonathan Brooks and Jaden Blue. And then the freshman, C.J. Baxter, a five-star running back. And Dylan, if he can run as well as he sings at those karaoke Oof. nights on those recruiting trips that I'm seeing, Texas has a real shot to be contenders here. But, yes... Can Jonathan Brooks step it up? We would be believing that he could, especially with Dylan talking about the offensive line that looked really good last year and, you know, was very young last year. Now they have that experience coming back. It's just something to watch out for. And I also wanted to touch on also how you're kind of flipping the headline, in a sense, right? So, like, you're losing the impact player that Bijan is. Who is going to be that next guy that the team or the opposing team is focused on, right? Most notably, you're going to zero in on the quarterback and you're going to go Quinn Ewers, right? Like, that's the guy that is going to be taking over this offense and being the name of that, right? Everyone's going to be looking to him and what he can do. And with teams, how they were kind of – or what people were seeing with Ewers when he was struggling, like, what was happening in those games? Well, most notably, like, TCU, they were able to limit Texas to one-dimensional, right? So they're playing – to the strength of, okay, Ewers has X amount of experience. He's 
still you know Struggling getting experience the in the games right yeah exactly yeah yeah so they're able to you know put him in situations where he was more like okay screw it i'm throwing into double coverage i'm forcing a throw here and that was because they were able to take Bijan out of the game like against dcu Bijan had like 29 yards rushing around that right so in those in those type of scenarios you were struggling right so that's something that he's going to have to work on and by having a balanced running attack with jonathan brooks right with Jadon blue that you're talking about that would be able to offset it, but also it's just going to be more weight for Ewers. And when we're talking about this headline, it's, it's Ewers that's also going to have to step up, not just yeah. that running those running backs that are coming in for Pichon. Yeah, 100%. I think we'll talk about Ewers more in depth in another video. But as Dylan's saying, you know, he is going to have a lot more pressure, of course, this season. Last year, yet again, the team didn't do you know quite as well as, of course, they wanted to. But... Like Dylan was saying, teams were able to stack the box against Bijan and make Ewers throw. And of course, you know, your first season of, uh, you know, starting college football, you know, it's kind of tough to complete those passes. And, you know, Ewers showed glimpses of being the Texas Messiah, Dylan, but then at times did not show that. So that's going to be uh, something that Quinn's going to have to figure out, of course, with the new running back committee. It might help him out a little bit, but that's to be determined, of course. Now, headline number one, we've made it, Dylan, this far. If you guys have made it this far, we appreciate you watching. The top one, this comes down to Texas's record. Can they improve? But more importantly, what I wrote down for my headline is, can Texas win a Big 12 title? And possibly, Dylan, possibly, don't write this down, guys, but can they chase those higher aspirations, which you guys have a good idea of what I'm talking about here. Dylan, what do you think? Yeah, so, I mean, it, it's a tough situation, right? Because what we touched on earlier is, oh, look at that. Texas is now getting guys in the round one to be drafted in the NFL. Hooray, look at the, look at the talent that, that's producing now. That's the, it's the next – like, these are, like, the victories that we're talking about, right? Obviously, Devin, um, we have a really bad track record of being like, yeah, Texas is going to go, like, 10-2 and two this year, and then they go 8-5, and five, like, last year, and we're kind of like, oh, yeah. So, this year, when I was looking at the schedule, I was like, okay, there's three major games – that I'm looking at, right? And then there's two fringe teams that's like, okay, uh, these these could be games where Texas would probably be favored to win, uh, but it'll be a tough environment for which they can win that game, obviously. Um, big problem this year is, even though Texas didn't win, right, against Alabama, they are now going into Alabama this year for week two, right? So uh, that'll be... That'll be interesting. Obviously, there's no Bryce Young back there um, to go up against this time. But uh, it's still a lot of talent. Nick Saban as a head coach still for Alabama. So that's going to be a major game for Texas to see kind of where they're at, especially week two when both teams are not necessarily have rounded into form yet. They're still kind of like getting ready for like conference play. So it'll be early on in the season. So really anything can happen. But again, it's going to be a tough, tough game for them. And then again, this is going to be the sixth game on the schedule, but the Red River rivalry, Devin, Oklahoma, they're going to have a bad taste in their mouth from last year from that shellacking that Texas gave them. So we're going to have to see Oklahoma's going to have the talent, but we're going to have to see kind of how they bounce back in those regards. And then again, week 10, um, not the reigning champ from the Big 12 championship game, but the best team from the Big 12, Devin, and obviously made some noise making it to the championship game, uh, college football, uh, TCU, right? They're going to be playing them 10th game on the schedule. They're going to be going into Fort Worth. So those are three games that are going to be tough. If they can win two out of those three, they'll be in a good spot. And then the fringe games I've got at Baylor, and I will never love a week 11 or 11th game of the season in Iowa State, right? Just I will never love that game and Matt Campbell as head coach. So that, those are going to be two games where it's like they'll probably be favored, but it's going to be tough, tough road environments, right? So honestly, I think – the, the the floor here for Texas will be nine and three. Um, anything below a nine and three, right, is going to be deemed a disappointment. I would almost say ten and two is what they're going to be obviously shooting for, right? So i i don't I don't love Texas in the situation of winning the Big Twelve, um, but I think they can be a top three team this year uh, rather than last year where they didn't make the championship game. I think that's fair, and we talked about it last year. The conference was pretty much as wide open as it's seemingly ever been. But, you know, what's in Texas's favor this year is that, you know, for how wide open it was last year, this year does seem to be even more wide open. Of course, with TCU, 
I believe losing Max Duggan, you know, just he ran out of years, Dylan. He's, he's been there forever. He's a That's Perry true. Ellis of TCU. He's, you know, had grandchildren already that have been playing for TCU with him. Is his son going to be playing for TCU, though? Is Duggan's son going to be there? If, if not, you know, one day, That'll... if not, that would be disappointing. But, you know, TCU, you know, they're, they're without their guy now. Of course, they had a good roster. They're just a team of scrappy players overall. And then Oklahoma, like Dylan said, of course, has a bad taste in their mouth. And it's hard to believe, you know, I'm sorry Longhorns fans, but it's hard to believe that the Sooners are going to be as bad as they were in that game when they had to run out, I believe, like their third-string quarterback. And that was that was ugly. If you guys were in attendance or just watching at home, that was, that was pretty ugly. And then Alabama, Dylan, yes, that will be a tough game. Of course, Texas, you know, gave them a run for their money at home, albeit. But it is an you know out of conference game, so that won't impact, of course, the Big Twelve title race. But of course, that game is very important if they want to have those higher aspirations that I was alluding to earlier. You have to win games like that, no matter how tough. You know, Nick Saban, of course, is not going to take it easy, especially when Sarkeesian steals his entire you know coaching staff <laughs> way back when. But you know, we'll see. Texas obviously hasn't won a title in the Big 12 since 2009. It's been some time, Dylan. Uh, you know, those uh, Nadamik and Sue days. But, you know, can Texas take a step up here? As we said, the running game will have to definitely elevate from what they've been used to in terms of on the bench, and now they're getting time to shine. Quinn Ewers... That is where the majority of the pressure is going to be this season. He cut the mullet. Is that going to free his shoulders, Dylan? You know, for some of this weight, we'll see. Is the weight? Yeah, is the weight <laughs> off his head? Is that affecting his decision making? His hair? Oh, that's great. Uh, but uh, you know, we love Quinn. Hopefully, he gets it together this year. Like I said earlier, when he was on, he was on. When he was off, it was definitely not too pretty. But then again, he was a you know practically a freshman quarterback. He did enroll. You know, a year early. I think he redshirted, but still very inexperienced. Now coming back with some more experience under his belt. You know, there's reasons to be optimistic for Texas this year. And as Dylan said, you know, at least in terms of record, you want at least like a ten and two. If not, you'd be pretty disappointed. And you know, of course, you know Texas is aiming for higher. But uh, more importantly than our headlines, what are you most looking forward to? this season and what headline are you really paying attention to thanks for watching and uh we appreciate that you guys waited for a six month break